Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Carol Vorderman. In the news this week, the French ambassador heads to Westminster to complain about the stereotyping of French people by the media. <laughs> In Romford, sales are brisk of the new DVD, Wedding Party Dancing for Dads. And as Wayne Rooney's foot injury continues to improve, he spends a relaxing weekend in the Swiss mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Arnie and Hislop's team is an actor whose screen roles range from the comedic, with Nail and I, to the dramatic, Gosford Park, to the tragic, the Argos ads. Please welcome Richard E. Grant. <laughs> With Paul Merton tonight is a man who's both an NHS doctor and a stand-up comedian about whose act, The Guardian wrote, he's at his best when sharing his delightful anecdotes about the clap clinic. Can't wait. Please welcome Dr Phil Hammond. <laughs> and we start with round one. Ian and Richard, a touch perhaps of déjà vu for you. Well, it's the Home Secretary being arrested. <laughs> Illegal immigrants working. Yeah, cleaning the, the phone office. Yeah, checking, the... checking their passports, yeah. throwing them away. We don't need to worry. Blimey, it's the spokesman. <laughs> it's the Home Office meltdown, isn't it? It absolutely is. Everything yes. goes wrong. Reed's come into the job. He comes in, and says, "I'm going to clear this up," and then immediately finds out that um, the figures he's given are wrong. The actual cleaners in the immigration building are illegal immigrants. Rapists and pedophiles. <laughs> pedophiles. 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 Yep. Yep. However you pronounce it, you say pedophile, I say pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big scandal in the middle of the week. There's a man there offering a visa to a woman if she'll have sex with him. And then it turns out he's a, a senior immigration official and he's an illegal immigrant as well. <laughs> you just get the feeling everybody is. How did you get in as an immigrant? Oh, I don't know. I slept with a lot of people. <laughs> just checking. I feel as a yeah. citizen I have to now. <laughs> and the government aren't going to do it, so I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> They kept asking questions, where are all the illegal immigrants are? And you didn't know, I can tell you, they're working in the NHS. We've got this huge organisation. You could be a locum in the NHS for years without fear of detection. As I was saying to Dr Bin Laden, only the other day. So, John Reid, our new Home Secretary, has been getting tough this week. Mm -hmm. What did he tell the Mirror on Wednesday? Didn't he say he was the enforcer? He absolutely did. He yeah. uh, was talking about his uh, working hours. He actually said, I'll well work 18 hours a day to sort this out. Better than Prescott, who says, I'll work f***ing. <laughs> <laughs> How many points have you got for that? Yeah. He is going to die prematurely. You look at him, and he's an ex-smoker, isn't he, John Reed? And he works like alcoholic. And the more you look at him now, he looks like Gollum. He's getting angry and angry. <laughs> and the little ball head is shining bright pink. Give me back my precious prisoners. He's just such a... <laughs> if his head's going to explode, he will go. I tell you, I'll give him two weeks tops. <laughs> You're supposed to be two weeks before the Home Secretary's head explodes. I think it'll explode. Exactly. <laughs> Let's keep on see... television until that happens. I can see that <laughs> But he started blaming all his predecessors, yeah. which is, in his case, are all previous Labour ministers. <laughs> so he said it's Clark's fault, Blunkett's fault and Straw's fault. Well, it's basically the football equivalent. We're shit and we know we are, don't we? It's so <laughs> bloody hopeless and incompetent and we don't give a toss. So while they were busy releasing all these murderers and paedophiles, what was happening to thousands of innocent people? It was CRB checks, weren't they? People were having their Criminal Records Bureau checked. And if your name just happens to have three syllables similar to a paedophile, uh, they can brand you as that and then that's your life over, basically. The Home Office can do that. They can brand you a criminal when you aren't. Mm -hmm. That's easy. That's management. <laughs> One man discovered that, uh, according to Home Office records, he'd been convicted for selling pornography in Bournemouth in 1972, which was ludicrous, cos he'd never been to Bournemouth. <laughs> um, uh, CRB, Criminal uh, Record Bureau, which is where all these dodgy records came from, is actually run by an outside company. Any oh. guesses, Ian? Is it Capita? Ah, uh, yes. I yes, think it, it would be. Where they're based, in Brussels? No they're, no, they're not based in Brussels, they're based in, in London, but they just get all the government contracts and Capita's chairman gave a lot of money as a loan to the Labour Party, and there's no link between those two items. No. No. Huge amounts of money given all the government contracts. Yeah. If you link A and B, you could go to jail. Mm. <laughs> Which other leading Labour figure has been in trouble this week? Over a party fundraiser. Little wheeze, apparently. 
uh, auctioning off the Hutton Report. Yeah. It was one of those lovely charity auctions for Labour. And they, they um, auctioned off the Hutton Report, an investigation into a man's suicide. Yes. And it had been signed by Cherie Blair. <laughs> She's got tact, but hasn't she? They'd done it twice before, hadn't they? Alistair Campbell had signed two before. <laughs> the MP who organised it was that bloke who was on the, the gay website in his underpants. What was his name? Jeffrey right? Archer. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, yes, yes. yes. We, we can cut that, but... Uh, I'll endorse that. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite difficult to libel Archer, and you've just done it. <laughs> Just, it was Chris I'm Bryant. Drawing. That's right, him and his mate. Yeah, Not they apologised. But the people so. who signed it didn't apologise. Campbell hasn't, Cherie hasn't, Blair hasn't. Chris Bryant, the Labour MP, he was actually the auctioneer at this event. And uh, he has apologised, you're absolutely right. And uh, some time ago, he appeared on his own website right. in his uh, pants, pants. Which was quite embarrassing, so I thought we'd show it again. <laughs> uh, and he <laughs> was... You can see where he keeps the tripod, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of pants, uh, what important issue did Gordon Brown sit on the fence about this week? Oh, it's the usual stuff, isn't it? He was interviewed by New Woman magazine. Yes, it's hard classic, hitting. What pants do you wear? And he prevaricated on that. Mm -hmm. But he said something absurd about the music he listens to in the morning. He said it was either Bach, Beethoven, or for a bit of a fizz, the Arctic Monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you look good on the dance floor. That's uh, one of their songs, by oh, the way. <laughs> But it's better than Prince Charles when he's interviewed by Anton Deck Prandjian at the youth vote and saying, I'm tremendously fond of Leonard Cohen. <laughs> Imagine Charles sitting there late at night. Suzanne takes you down. <laughs> Misery yeah. flowing out of him. Help Sancho drop in the lyrics into his speeches like a bird on a wire. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> Yes, it's the new broom sweeping through the Home Office. Unfortunately, the broom's being held by a cleaner who's an illegal immigrant from Somalia. <laughs> the Home Office admits it would take over a hundred years to systematically sort through the backlog of files concerning asylum seekers. So if you're watching Mr Zebedee Zachariah from Zanzibar, you're probably safe for a while. <laughs> <laughs> One of John Reed's initiatives is to introduce a knife amnesty which comes just too late for Charles Clark's back. <laughs> <laughs> John Reid was quick to tell reporters that he'd been invited to the Beckham's glamorous World Cup party, although that was only because Posh thought he was great as Frank Butcher in EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Phil, here's yours. OK. Oh, have a placebo. Go on. Yep. It won't hurt a bit. <laughs> and another one. You'll love this. Oh, I don't know what that is there. That's, uh, oh, that's... Oh, that's John Prescott relaxing in between committees. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh, Leonard Cohen's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were about 13 rather Jurassic consultants and Nobel Prize winners uh, who said it's all nonsense. We should only have treatments on the NHS that have been through large controlled trials and all this is piffle. In fact, I met one of the signatories to this letter that they sent to all NHS trusts years ago and he was very threatened by complementary therapies and he described the women who used them as grollies which was guardian readers of limited intelligence in ethnic skirts. <laughs> <laughs> which is just about all of medical bigotry in one go. Uh, <laughs> actually, homeopathy and complementary therapy, even if you don't believe in the science of it, I've tried doing it and I can't because I can't keep a straight face. <laughs> I, I cannot look at a patient and say, you've got too much jitsu in your Sioux belt. <laughs> I'm going to have to stick a needle in your encircling glory. I can't do it, OK? <laughs> But the people who do do it means they prescribe less medicines, less people on Prozac, less people on non-steroidals burning holes in their stomach, less side effects. It probably is cost-effective. So stop just taking the piss out of the homeopaths. That's the fullest answer we've ever had. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'd be great if it was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Not, though. You're quite right. Prince Charles this week has also been defending uh, alternative medicine. Um, and he said he was a big fan of what particular kind of complementary medicine? Shih Tzu, or is that a dog? Uh, nearly. Shih Tzu is a... <laughs> Shih Tzu, Matthew. Shih Tzu. Shih Tzu. I've had underwater Shih Tzu by a Dutchman called Pindergriff. Uh, and... <laughs> That's a headline in itself, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He took me into this very hot pool and he hugged me from behind and he said, let me... Let me... <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> Let me ex experience the joy of aquatic body work, is how he put it. <laughs> And did you? <laughs> I felt better afterwards, but, you know. But there are, I mean, there are people out there doing all the colonic stuff, the colonic irrigation, and yeah. they just, you know, you get a length of garden hose and you stick whack one end up the old rusty sheriff's badge and put a funnel on the other. <laughs> Not at the moment, you don't. There's a ban. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you're safe. I think you're safe. You're not... There's nothing about shoving a hose pipe up your ass. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of England, you can do what you like. <laughs> don't mix it up the sprinkler, yeah. though, will you? <laughs> it draws out your toxins, but not as effectively as the Carol Vorderman detox diet of oh. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was a bit rich, you having a go at him for doing terrible adverts. <laughs> oh, yes. yes, I know, The I words know. pot and terrible debt-collecting agency come to life. <laughs> <laughs> Who are those people you do? First class, excellent company. Right, are you in debt? You can be more in debt with Carol. <laughs> Do Would you like to earn lots of money? You can't, because she's got it all. <laughs> Do they send you a Christmas card or something, Carol, when they lose their house because they're going to death? No, they've never actually repossessed a home. Are you sure? I'm absolutely positive. So, secured loans do mean you lose your house eventually if you can't No, you have the potential to do that if you go with another company. <laughs> anyway, dentist Phil. Do you think dentists are a little bit weird? Weird in what sense? Well, just slightly odd. They have very high suicide rates, staring into people's mouths, lots of money, doesn't make you happy, die young. OK. <laughs> That's not what you were getting at, was it? Uh, well, no, I just wanted you to have a look at this dentist convention in the Czech Republic, ah, which happened oh, this yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> If you're going to knock somebody's teeth out, you might as well do it at a dental conference. <laughs> Apparently, the man had insulted the other guy's wife and said that he'd married her for her money. Yeah. Who else has been concerned with our well-being this week? Oh, oh David, David Cameron. Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> they said the twins. He's in stereo. <laughs> yes, he said there was more to life than money, and we should try and be happy too. So, where did young David go for a night out this week to show that there's more to life than money? David Beckham's yeah. uh, party. Um, he invited himself, didn't he? Did he invite um, himself? Yeah, he wasn't on the list to start with and he wangled an invite. You once worked with Victoria Beckham, didn't you? In I did. Spice World. In a classic film called Spice World. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in that film? I was. <laughs> <laughs> and they just invented Viagra and I just turned 40 and I tell you, it was an ad antidote to not having <laughs> to go into the chemist and get Viagra, <laughs> just being having my bum pinched every day by those young new really? bar ladies was extremely exhilarating. <laughs> it's very well paid too. The thing I like about you is you are honest about it. <laughs> a lot of people would have said it was a great part. I thought, you know, maybe I needed to expand <laughs> no. my roles, but no. no, you, it's bottoms and money. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what do you do it for? The same. The same. <laughs> Whose bottoms? Anyone's bottoms. <laughs> This, of course, is the current debate centering around unconventional medical practices within the NHS, such as keeping hospitals open and providing a bed straight away. <laughs> One of the controversial treatments under debate is the use of coffee enemas, in which a coffee solution is pumped into the body via the rectum. Not only is its effectiveness in doubt, it'll probably get you thrown out of Starbucks. <laughs> One medical expert, Peter Fisher, told The Guardian, I don't know how homeopathy works. Fair enough, except that he's Peter Fisher, director of the Royal Homeopathy <laughs> And so to round two, this is a personal favourite of mine, the spinning picture conundrum numbers round. You see a picture with a number. Uh, what's the picture about and what's the number got to do with it? That's what I want to know. Ian and Richard, here's your first picture. <laughs> yes, well, this is Lordy. <laughs> the um, <laughs> satanic <laughs> death rock band. Who won the Eurovision Song Contest. They did indeed, from Finland. First time Finland's ever won. Absolutely right. Do you want to see them? Yes. Yes, yes. let's see them. From my back, like a toss of my hair. <coughs> my face is sharp and my eyes are red. Not quite an angel or the one that <laughs> fell. Not just in turn of soul, but straight to hell. Did you spot Margaret 
put Beckett there on the keyboard. <laughs> I wouldn't ask me this. I actually watched this. My children were watching, and the, and the finish entry came on, and I said, they are so bad, if they win, I'll give all of you a fiver. <laughs> <laughs> they had some friends round, and then they won. <laughs> so I'm severely irritated by the finish entry, <laughs> to be quite honest. You're not in debt now, by any chance, are you? <laughs> Thank you. Is it 51 because it's the 51st Eurovision Very Song Very good. Contest. Points for you, young Points. man, yes. See, get an Very actor good. in. Oh. <laughs> uh, Lordy has a rock and roll motto. Anyone know what it is? We don't believe in clear seal. <laughs> <laughs> Europe, get ready to get scared. Didn't Buck Spiz use that? <laughs> or was it Hitler? <laughs> There is always a confusion between Hitler yeah. and Buck's feet, yeah. Yeah. Traditionally, yeah. over the when, years. When you draw the Venn diagram, there's a bit of overlap in exactly. the middle, isn't there? And just before he invaded Poland, he was uh, sort of hesitated, uh, and somebody uh, said, well, so he said, I'm just making my mind you. up. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> so, how did the Finnish press report the news that they had finally won? They proudly put them on the front of all the Finnish newspapers on the front page. They did, under these headlines. It's official. Hell has frozen over Finland. <laughs> 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 OK, which other losing entry seemed equally confident of a win? Latvia, excellent entry. We're going to win the Eurovision. Ah, no. Tralar. No, it was Lithuania. Was it Lithuania? Lithuania, Stupid and their me. song was called We Are The Winners. Should we see a bit of that? <laughs> yes. And the message there is, if you're an epileptic, don't go into strobe lighting. <laughs> <laughs> it also gives the light to Dr John Reed saying he's concentrating on the job. He's there! Yeah. <laughs> Dancing across the <laughs> idiots. <laughs> so, 51 was the right answer. 51st Eurovision Song Contest. Well done. Remember these numbers. We'll be coming back to them later. After Lordy won the contest, Finnish bar owners promised they'd play the song all through the night until dawn, which sadly means sometime in September. <laughs> <laughs> the British entry was Teenage Life, performed by a rapper called Daz, not to be confused with the washing powder he'll be stacking on supermarket shelves. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul and Phil, here's your picture. <laughs> Google, uh, there was a survey in the papers this week looking at various towns in the country and seeing um, what they Google the most. In Bradford, it's uh, Osama bin Laden. In Brentford, it's Viagra. Absolutely mm. right. Yes, yeah. you get points for that. Yes. Uh, why the 19? That was the... Is that the number of towns in the survey? It was the number of regions that they split uh, Britain How fascinating. into. fascinating. What do we get to put your name in? Can we do it? Uh, it's usually to do with bottoms and okay. things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Ian must be one of your many subscribers. <laughs> In St Albans, the words most often put into Google were gym and weight loss. What about Aberdeen? Uh, Mars Whiskey. bar and weight gain. <laughs> <laughs> it was savings and kebab. <laughs> <laughs> but the internet users of Thames Ditton, they've been Googling hot water bottles and Noel Edmonds. It's what I want to do to Noel Edmonds with a hot water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> This, of course, is Google's breakdown by region of search words. The Daily Star pointed out that the most popular interest in Wigan was swinging and in Salford, divorce, which suggests that a lot of couples in Salford have spent the occasional weekend in Wigan. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Richard, back to you. Here's your picture. This is Television Centre at BBC, and the second eye, um, the light bulb failed in it, which is, I think, what the two is, and it's taken them a month which is basically to change a light bulb. <laughs> and there's some argument, I think there's outside contractors, I think there's a management team, I think there's the directorate of light bulbs. Um, <laughs> and lots of illegal immigrants have been <laughs> hiding in the light bulbs. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically a story about BBC incompetence. <laughs> it's reported to cost the BBC each time these contractors don't only work, but they make a risk assessment. £1,100. Uh, but what else has the BBC been criticised for spending money on recently? Chris Moyles. <laughs> <laughs> There was also £2,500 spent putting up nine shelves. 
But I'm most interested in how much they spend for that invisible thread on Hugh Edwards' lip. You know, when he's looking oh, yeah. tough and he yeah. goes like that? Prince of Wales says he'd like to see greater use of complementary medicine alongside orthodox treatment. He was speaking on the day several British... Well, there's one physical disability we can laugh at. <laughs> I think it's more an affectation. So, anyway, the number was two. It was the number of workmen it should have taken oh. to change the light bulb. In fact, an electrician did turn up to change the light bulb earlier this week, but he was instantly whisked into the News 24 studio <laughs> to be interviewed about Russian foreign policy. <laughs> Paul and Phil, uh, here's your next picture. <laughs> <laughs> right, planes. Is it to do with that jet that carries 800 people? And these are the percentages that have come from what parts of the jet are made in different parts of Europe no, and England? Good guess, but sadly not. They so add up to 114. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be on my side. <laughs> well, I have to admit, I got 9% I got for my mock O level maths in 1973, <laughs> Did you? so yeah. 9%? Yeah. That's an A star now. I know. <laughs> It's, in fact, a story of Andy Parsons' uh, journey from Oh, yes, it's the man France. who wanted to go to, to Ireland and had to go via France. Oh. He was actually going from northern France to Manchester. Oh, was he? Let's have a look at his journey. Do you know the details of this? And what, he wanted to get on the plane, and the plane was sent off to some administrative error with no passengers on it, or indeed no pilot. How it ever took off, there was a mystery. <laughs> They're looking for a very clever monkey. <laughs> with a grudge against society. <laughs> um, I don't know, really. Something, something like that. Yeah, and then he flew to court, and yeah. he had to take uh, a taxi ride to Waterford. Yeah. Um, but it was too wet to take off there, so he had to go back to Cork. And then he got a coach to Dublin, and from there he eventually got to Manchester. So the numbers are right. six airports, right. uh, 30 hours, 78 uh -huh. miles in a taxi. This is the two-hour journey from France to Manchester, which, thanks to his low-budget airline, turned into a 30-hour nightmare for teacher Andy Parson. Most annoyingly for Mr Parson, who's from Wigan, he missed two swingers parties. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you're probably wondering, what's the point of all those numbers, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Well, I'm going to show you. Here are the numbers. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yes. For two bonus points. Now, you need these, Paul. Two bonus points. I need you to use those numbers to reach a target. And, Paul, you can cheat. You can give us a target. <laughs> four. No, four. No, that's a stupid target. 102. You... 51 times two. Yeah, yeah well done. <laughs> Yay! Did we win? No. Oh. Ian, target? Well, sorry, I don't understand the game. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a target. Three-figure number. What, a government target or one that's...? <laughs> one that you might have to adjust in the middle of you giving the... Uh... <laughs> OK, 207. 207 is the target, and you have to use these numbers, but you can't use any of them more than once, proper countdown rules, to make that target of 207. Your time starts now. Close, 207? 201. 201, that's very good. Yeah, 186. 2 minus 30 is 18. 6 <laughs> by 78 is 24. It makes 207. Yeah. <laughs> Some people thought I'd done it for real then. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The scores at the end of that round <laughs> are Ian and Richard with five points, Paul and Phil six. Ooh. <laughs> Time now for our Missing Words round, which this week features The Revolution, the periodical of the Union of UK Unicyclists. So here we go with... What spent 20 years on a trolley in casualty? Drunk anaesthetist. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to, if they can put themselves out, then that gives okay. you confidence. Yeah. It's this extra, hasn't it, who's appeared in casualty yeah. in all but a handful of shows over the last 20 years. He's mm. sort of appeared as a patient, he's appeared as a porter, he's <laughs> appeared as a drinks vending machine in one episode. <laughs> The headline is, the man who is happy to have spent 20 years in a trolley and casualty. Mm. Uh, this is record-setting TV extra Paul Anderson. According to the Daily Telegraph, in May 1996, one plot centred on him winning £500 on a scratch card. But I'm sure no-one will remember that, said Mr Anderson modestly. And accurately. <laughs> <laughs> Next, what found in chips? Potatoes. Sugar. <laughs> Lord Lucan. 
Leonard Cohen. <laughs> the answer Cohen is... Cohen the Barbarian. <laughs> Hand grenade found in... Leonard Cohen! <laughs> An unexploded shell and a live hand grenade turned up amongst the potatoes at a McCain's processing plant. The grenade was found by a factory worker who now has crinkle-cut fingers. <laughs> and finally, not so much a headline as a poem. No brakes, no limits, no handlebars too. What could possibly be more fun to do? Original, challenging, plus keeps you fit. It's just like a bicycle with one missing bit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you the answer yep. is original challenging plus keeps you fit pleasure to ride though you wobble a bit which oh, uh, sure. coincidentally that last bit's also john prescott's lonely hearts ad <laughs> <laughs> this is from the fun section of the revolution magazine which also includes the rules of a unicycling game called tig one person is it, they have to ride around and tig a person who then becomes it. The game has... <laughs> but an awful lot of losers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. So the final scores are Ian and Richard, six points. Paul and Phil win with nine points. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> note we say thank you to our panelists Ian Hislop and Richard D e. Grant Paul Merton and Dr Phil Hammond and I leave you with news that in London's West End producers of the new Wombles musical announced they've successfully cast the role of great uncle Bulgaria <laughs> In Chelmsford, as a pharmacy runs out of the new anti PMT drug one woman can't conceal her disappointment <laughs> and David Blunkett regrets leaving his dog with John Prescott for the weekend. <laughs> Good night. The one to watch tonight, Mel and Griff are on the box, clowning around for one final time. Not to be missed, the Smith & Jones sketchbook next on BBC One. Well, the men have had their say, but not to be outdone, it's the turn of the grumpy old women back on BBC Two for a brand new series. And that's tonight at ten.